Good morning. This is Kevin Raber, and I am talking to you from my back deck in Indianapolis. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Finally, a Sunday morning we can actually sit outside and enjoy. So the hot weather is breaking and gives me a lot of, of optimism and um, looking forward to the, the fall that's coming our way. Now, today I just wanted to talk briefly about a hot topic for everybody and something I was thinking about um, as I started drinking my coffee earlier this morning, and that's AI. We hear AI a lot these days, and I just want to make sure I share with you my feelings on AI. And uh, we will be covering a lot about AI uh, as we move forward in the coming months. And uh, we'll be talking to some interesting people uh, regarding AI and photography. So a couple ways AI is a word that comes into many of uh, the contexts, like Lightroom and Photoshop. And uh, there's a chat AI, which... Uh, you can put a sentence in and it goes out to the internet, researches something and writes an essay for you. Actually pretty cool. I did put a, uh, a demo of that up about the Kodak story. But I want to talk about AI, uh, mid-journey, the AI that creates images from text prompts. And um, I need to say, first off, I'm completely against it. No way, no how am I ever going to be doing that unless I'm just trying to have fun. Uh, maybe a couple Bloody Marys and uh, <laughs> mid-journey would be kind of fun to play around with. But... It's not my cup of tea, okay? It's also not copyrightable, and it's kind of a, a controversy these days because there have been a number of photographers that have entered photos generated completely by prompts in uh, Midjourney and other applications like that that have won contests, and then after the contest is over, they confess. And uh, it's really causing big issues now in contests where they're actually asking if you are a finalist in the contest, you need to provide an actual raw so we can see that it was actually a photograph you made uh, that you worked on rather than one that you generated from just writing text. Pretty cool what it can do and you know there's some samples I'm showing uh, with this video of what I did in AI where I just said look show my house 30 years from now being abandoned or after a nuclear apocalypse or uh, turn my house into a bouncy house. Pretty freaking cool what you can do and that was using my own photographs. Um, there's somewhere you just say what you want and it generates a whole uh, slew of images. Anyway, the other AI that I think is very important that we cover is the AI tools that we have in Photoshop and Lightroom. And I'm all for the use of those. Those are actually pretty cool to be honest with you. Uh, Lightroom now has AI masking, which is incredible. It takes our raw editing steps and workflows to a whole new level. And I've been using that a lot. I'm a new Lightroom person, as you might know, but I'm actually pretty damn good at it now. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun with that, but the AI features in that, the auto exposure uh, feature in the develop module where you just hit auto and it kind of looks at your image and makes the, the adjustments. Uh, I use that on a, almost every image to get started. Uh, the story behind that is uh, Jeff Shiwi, you all know Jeff. Uh, he helped Adobe do that by sending them a lot of photographs that he did both raw and then uh, edited and they use those in the learning process for that AI. So I, I like that tool. I like the AI masking tool. In Photoshop, uh, the new Photoshop beta has some amazing tools as far as it goes uh, with AI, such as the generative fill and other tools in there. I can stretch the uh, size of a photograph. I can take something out of the photograph. I can suggest that uh, I want a new background that looks like this or that. And uh, it gives you not only one, but three choices. And it's an awful lot of fun. Adobe also has uh, another beta out there called Firefly. Uh, I'm not such a, a fan of that, but what I do admire is that uh, Adobe's AI with Firefly is that they're uh, not going out to the internet to use the pictures, they're using the, the stock images that they have, and uh, they set a lot of parameters up so that uh, people's images can't be used without their approval and, and things like that. So we'll have to see where this whole journey goes, but I just wanted to share with you, number one, I do not like AI where I generate images unless it's for my own pleasure and fun. You'll never find those images unless I'm using them as an example in something. But it is interesting and, and pretty scary what it can do because it will change the way photography is looked at over the coming years. I am for all the tools that AI can do in different applications. You know, Topaz has them, Skylum has them, uh, Adobe certainly has them in their programs, so I'm all for that. But anyway, just wanted to share with you my thoughts a little bit on AI and a little bit more about the fact that we are going to cover more about AI in the coming months here at PhotoPXL. Once again, thank you very much for uh, watching this. I'm excited to see where our daily chat goes. This is Kevin Raber from the back deck of my house. 
I'll see you tomorrow on the daily chat.